What's the juiciest rumor at your school that turned out to be 100% true? Probably not the juiciest thing, but the one I remember because of how I found out. A few of our high school library's walls were weird. Sort of a lowercase b shape. So there was this empty space behind the bookshelves up against the walls. Tunnels, basically. Word was, students were faking in their point I worked in the library. Had to move the shelves, clean the tunnels. Found used condoms. It was an all boys school at the time, if that matters. Mind, the condoms weren't the worst thing, really. The leftover food debris and there was worse, stuff like chicken bones. Edit. Couple years later, I was talking with an ex-schoolmate. Another guy from our graduating class comes in. I hate that guy, my friend says. He's faking gay. Ah, uh, dude, you're gay. There's gay, and there's so faking gay other gay people think you're too faking gay. Turns out that gent had been one of the entrepreneurial fellows selling services for a few dollars ago. I wasn't shocked, since I already had some idea. But I was surprised that the going rate had been so cheap. Juiciest? Christ. I don't know. Here's some random ones, though point some dude kept jerking off in the bathroom stalls. NBD. Problem is he'd finish by coating the toilet dispenser with his hand. Made batter a rule got put in place that specifically disallowed people from bringing food into the bathrooms. People kept making hot dog boats and clogging up the toilets with them. Point principal and VP were banging in the office. Point soccer coach was banging athletes. I'm fairly certain I have seen a couple of students discreetly banging in the cafeteria. Point one of my best friends fell on a rocking chair. The pointy bit that lets it rock back and forth. It went up his butt. He was in the hospital for a while. Point, and I'll leave the probably best for last. Spatula girl. She was a bit of an attention hoe, even going out of her way to fake fainting spells. One day she decided to master, bait with the handle of a spatula, record it, and send it out to every dude she had the number to. Cops got involved, and a couple of those dudes went to juvie for possession of child pornography. As far as I know, action was not taken against her later in the year the school's rival had a glow stick girl, who, you guessed it, did the same thing with glow sticks. Last football game of the season the rival school showed up with a bunch of spatulas and my school showed up with a bunch of glow sticks high school is weird. This is also not even everything that happened, just most of the sexual type stuff. This will probably get buried, but it was a legendary rumor that I never really believed point when I was a junior the principal's daughter was a freshman. The principal had three daughters, but she was the oldest and first to hit high school. It was a small town, there was only one high school and the principal happened to be the most successful basketball coach in school history, and in this town, that was important. The guy could do no wrong point so the girl, by default, had a lot more attention than any other normal freshman girl. She was outgoing and nice, and we were involved in athletics together, so we knew each other, other than me just knowing who she was like most of the rest of the school. The rumor was that this girl, the principal's daughter made a sex tape with a popular boy in her grade when they were 13. Apparently the parents found the VHS tape and a few copies and both families decided to destroy the tapes and leave the cops out of it as it was a small town and both families were prominent in the community. This was all rumored, and if you ask the boy about it, he never answered the question. He never said yes or no, just found some sort of a way to change the topic. In hindsight it was actually amazing. How good he was at it given that he was 14 at the time. Fast forward to senior year, I had known of the story for more than a year, like everyone else, and I regularly talked to the principal's daughter as a friend and she didn't really seem like the type of person to do that, so I didn't really believe it. Point one day after lunch sitting around talking, one of my friends starts playfully arguing with her about something, and the argument escalated, and then he says at least I didn't. Make a sex tape, when I was 12, her response, hey, I was 13. I put the donut in the VCR point my buddies, and I had this game where we'd put stuff in the VCR after lunch for sheets and giggles. I put a donut in there one day. Next day, keep in mind this was 2008 and nobody used VHS anyways, the instructor decided to play a tap for us. She couldn't figure out why the tape wouldn't go it. When she decided to check the VCR she found the donut. 
I was immediately snitched on and called to the disciplinary admin's office. I denied it up and down. Turns out he was gonna be gone for 6 months on medical leave and decided to deal with it when he got back. Point over those 6 months chaos ensued. Point it got to the point where staff members were battling against each other via email on whether or not I actually did it. My dad worked at the school, so he kept me up to date on everything, and half of the students couldn't decide either the day the administrator got back from. Levon was on the other side of the state at a track meet. He went into every classroom looking for me and pulled students out of class trying to find out the truth. The whole thing got a bit out of hand point they next Monday at 7.46am I was called to his office as soon as I stepped foot on school property. In his office were two police officers and my dad sitting there with security camera footage of me walking into the class with a donut. Needless to say I confessed point it's been 10 years and staff slash students still know about it in detail. Two teachers got fired for sleeping with students. A guy who slept with a girl on her graduation night, and two years later a woman who slept with a guy on his graduation night. Neither of them had done anything with a student before that, but there had been rumors about them both for years. The woman actually slept with one of my little brother's friends the big one though was this. Across the road from my secondary school was a cluster of shops. The year before I started, students got banned from going there to buy lunch because of antisocial behavior. Rumors and provable facts about stuff going on behind the shops after school persisted throughout my time in school. The ones most slash all of the students knew were truer that the area hosted fights, illicit smoking and drinking, some we'd use, and teenage couples making out. There were other rumors that we didn't believe about things that happened after most of us would go home. Drug deals and such. Basically point now, one of my friends had an aunt who owned one of the shops. And when I was in final year, both said friend and I were prefects. One morning, friend arrived into school and demanded an emergency meeting of the 10 prefects. It was, I should add, a relatively small year group and odds were that every year most of the prefects would have been at least friendly because everybody knew everybody else. But in my year a large number of people from the same social circle had been picked for the job, so we were all pretty good friends. So we were used to consulting collectively about stuff before deciding whether to go to the teachers. We'd all been doing it for years already and none of us were really models of excellent student behavior. We were just decent at not getting caught. Anyway, friend who called the meeting announces that we have a problem. Her aunt CCTV has picked up footage of students from the previous night, and it looks like they are engaging in prostitution. Basically what we eventually found out was that one of the girls from the year below us, who we all suspected to have drug problems, had started pimping herself out for drug money, apparently charging as little as a tenner ago. She then convinced some of the younger girls she was dealing small amounts of drugs to that they should work for her in exchange for free drugs. So you literally had girls having sex, the guy being charged a tenner, and at the end of the evening, after having done this several times the girls would get a few grams of weed. So yeah, basically a 17 year old girl, who was over the age of consent, was pimping out a bunch of 14 to 16 year old girls to feed her drug habit. We of course reported it, the pimp got expelled, but I don't believe faced any legal repercussions, but when we got told that morning, one of the things friend said was that we knew one of the girls being pimped. She was the 14 year old sister of a girl in our year, from a very conservative Christian family, and I got picked to tell her sister this was happening because I was friends with her. That was not a fun experience. I was at an all boys boarding school, so you can just imagine a heaving mass of hormone controlled boys constantly making comments about the female staff in the school point anyhow, we had one who wasn't particularly attractive, rather overweight, but a distinctive physical feature to us was her frankly ridiculously sized breasts. They faking stuck out, like, if you were walking somewhere and you spotted her, you'd see her mountainous protrusions of flesh long before she came into view. Anyhow, she taught me biology for a term just before GCSEs, and she was a massive beach. She clearly had favorites, and said she'd like one boy in my A-level class has more brain cells than the rest of you combined. Rather funny really, cause a year later she was fired for sleeping with sixth formers. That boy clearly had more than just brain cells. 
I first heard about this a month or so before she got fired during a sixth form dinner. It was tradition and the head boy would make a speech. At least it was up until then. After this speech the administration stopped it along with the headmaster. Anyhow, the head boy was a cheeky faker and during his list of slightly inappropriate jokes about the staff. He made a comment about how certain students are seen going into, insert teacher's name, S flat daily. She lived in one of the boarding houses I asked some friends about this after, and they explained. Apparently certain boys she taught would go, and fuck her daily. Some days later, talk of a video surfaced, which I never saw, but many people I know did. It went round the school like a good hoe in an army camp. The video showed her playing with herself, which she thought was a good idea to send to her pubescent lovers. Anyhow, a teacher finally found out and there you have it. She was obviously fired and she cannot teach again. I did miss those breasts for a while, but since I stopped doing science, when sixth form came along I didn't see her much anyway. Point one I know the best thing though. The real highlight of this entire situation? She was the faking child protection officer. Late to the party but here it goes. I went to HS in a border town of a slash mex. Anywho, my butt told me that a cute innocent freezer Mexican term for prepi was making $500 every other day. When asked, she would convincingly deny and mark this as a rumor. A year went by and we both noticed the girl had bought herself a new phone, brand name clothes matching clothes with bag. I had her in one of my classes that year, and being the little gold digging bastard that I am, I started massively flirting with her. We were already at the good morning good night texts, and she would unbutton her polos all the way down when she would hang out with me after school. Planets were aligning, and hot and heavy texts were sent one Friday. We meet other during our last afternoon class, and tells me at the beginning that her parents aren't home and yada yada. Anywho Miss C was about to start class when two faking D agents come in and take her down to the principal's office. A little while later I get a text from her best friend that all the girl's close friends were getting called to the office. So I get called and there are the two agents with a pink gen sport backpack on a desk. They tell me to look inside. $1500 cash. Then they ask me if I had assisted said girl in trafficking cocaine across the border. I think I blathered about only being interested in her romantically and knowing nothing about the drugs. They told me they read my texts and that I was free to go. Never saw said girl again or found out what ultimately happened. I was pretty damn mad I was cork blocked by the day though. She had such great boobs. TLDR, girl at my school, was a cocaine mule and I was cork blocked by the US governor. When I was a senior in high school there was a girl that was extremely attractive that was a freshman. She was developed like a grown woman. Huge stigs amazing as an all. There was a rumor going around that she loved to give BJs with frozen grapes in her mouth. Some of the guys saying this were not the so called coolest kids, so I don't think many people thought the rumors were true. I was only school one year with her. I worked at a local grocery store and during her sophomore year they hired her there. I was a year out of school going to the junior college. I worked graveyard and she was only working a couple hours a day while she was still in school. We never were on the clock at the same time, so I didn't get a chance to know her. A couple months into her working there the assistant manager told me that the new clerk offered to give him a BJ while she had frozen grapes in her mouth. I didn't believe him cause he was an ugly as MF. He ended up getting fired because he kept telling people this and someone ratted him out. Girl was only 16 or 17 at the time in California, illegal. Fast forward a couple years. I bought a jet ski and invited a friend out. He was going to bring his girlfriend whom I had never met and said she was going to bring a hot friend. The friend ended up being that same girl. My friend took his girl out on the jet ski and I got to talking to the girl. She still was smoking hot, and she was sitting there in a bikini. We had a really good day, and ended up but that night. Long story short I got a BJ with frozen grapes in her mouth. One of my best friends, while growing up started dating this girl, when we like 13, and they stayed together for 4 to 5 years, all through high school. 
they were basically the perfect couple, he was the star QB, and was a beast at basketball and baseball as well, she was a star cheerleader, very pretty, and super smart. He got a scholarship to a D1 school to play baseball, she got an academic scholarship to the same school. They seemed destined to be together. Well, two weeks before our graduation, she was caught faking the boy's head basketball coach in a locker room during school. He was a good looking, younger dude, like 28 to 30, and she was 18 by this point. They were caught by one of the girl's best friends, but this girl was also best friends with the boyfriend, so she had to tell him. The news spread like wildfire, the entire school knew within just a few hours the girl fell off the face of the planet. She didn't come to school for the last two weeks, and she didn't walk at graduation. She deleted all social media. She wouldn't respond to any texts or phone calls from her now ex-boyfriend or any of her best girlfriends. No one knew where she was or how to get a hold of her. We found out later that summer that her mom put her on a plane and flew her halfway across the country to California to live with some relatives as soon as the news broke. She cut all ties with all of us, even though we've all been good friends since we were kids. She just dipped out in shame and began a new life halfway across the country. Point this all happened in 2009, but someone finally found her new FASA book a couple years ago. Seems like she's married and has a few kids. Seems happy. Still doesn't want to talk to any of her old friends. The coach quickly resigned and moved to Texas that summer. Probably still coaching point hell of a way to end our high school career. Not a huge one I suppose, but at my old high school we used to be able to leave campus for lunch. We lost that privilege during my junior year because the seniors that year had a food fight after administration told them not to. It was a sort of tradition each year that someone would start a massive food fight during the last couple weeks of school, and that year was no exception. Admins even told seniors that there was potential to miss graduation if any of them were caught or got involved in any food fight. Last week of school and the admin set up cameras watching the entire cafeteria with a couple security guards keeping an eye on everyone. Out of nowhere someone tosses a huge styrofoam cup with milkshake in it and hits someone. Then all hell breaks loose and within seconds the entire cafeteria is trashed. A handful of students got caught and reprimanded, but staff said they weren't sure who started the fight in the first place. Turned out they knew exactly who started it, a couple seniors on the football team who were super well known and popular. Staff basically gave them a free pass, even though they had other student witnesses and video of the whole thing. Football players didn't get punished at all, but everyone else lost their off-campus lunch privileges permanently. When I was in middle school I had a friend of mine named Joseph, he was my best friend. Well one day he started to tease me about being fat. So he told me that I couldn't move him because I was so fat I would be too slow. I hit him so hard via football stance that he flew 5 feet in the air in his entire left arm hit the double doors and the double doors inside were metal. And he collapsed on the ground crying with so much as cruciating pain. This was a week after kids had thrown oranges and apples at the back of my head. So anyway not long after that the rumor had gotten around that I had broken Joseph's arm. Within an hour about a good 70% of the school had found out that I had broke Joseph's arm. But it was still a rumor. So turns out it ended up being true. And, and they had to bring the vice principal over to confirm whether or not I had broken his arm for making fun of me. Ended up breaking his arm in three places. To the next day he comes to school, and he has a cast from the shoulder all the way down to his wrist. The kicker was when the vice principal had asked him if he had made fun of me, and called me fat, and told me that I couldn't move him anywhere. So he confirmed that he had been teasing me calling me fat, and saying that I couldn't move him anywhere. Which the vice principal then looked at him, and told him that he deserved everything he got. Eventually got the rumor spread to the kids that were throwing apples and oranges at the back of my head, and that rumor was going on for at least two days. Finally the vice principal went ahead and told Joseph to go to those kids who have thrown apples and oranges at my head and show them his broken arm. Just to confirm that I had broken his arm and that those kids had they had not stopped throwing oranges at the back of my head would be next. 
those kids never threw oranges and apples at me again, and the whole school eventually found out that that rumor of me breaking Joseph's arm was actually fact not a rumor. I was 14. Well I have heard a couple. Like one was about a girl and her boyfriend, who I actually had a pretty big crush on and all my friends knew it, had been having a lot of sex including one time they supposedly got caught faking in either his or her vehicle and got suspended. I remember this one specifically because I had a friend who has the same first name as the guy that did it and he got a lot of sheet over it for nothing and she had gotten pregnant at least 4 or 5 different times and she aborted all of them. Not too sure how true that was another was w same boyfriend and girlfriend that they broke up during Christmas break our junior year, 11th grade, and she had bought him either an Xbox or a PS4 for Christmas, and since they broke up right beforehand, she went over to his house, let him open it, then picked it up, and tossed the whole console in the yard. Another was about one of the middle school teachers who had been sending explicit pictures of himself to a female student. That one happened during the year after I left for high school and before my younger brother started attending. I just remember he was kinda creepy for a math teacher and I was overjoyed he wasn't my math teacher another one involved to students who had been caught smoking pot in the boys bathroom. The stupidest part was they were going around telling everyone, even teachers, that they were gonna do it. Then one morning after first bell, somebody went to the bathroom and smelled pot and these two guys just show up to class w fack in bloodshot eyes higher than space. Sue, so, yay, they were arrested then and there during first period and then suspended for the rest of the school year until finals came around. I think they both ended up dropping out. Also, when I was a senior, somebody called a bomb threat to the elementary schools and they put all schools in the district under lockdown slash fire drill. Cop cars were everywhere and everybody had to sit outside in fact in August in Mississippi on metal bleachers, middle and high school evacuated to the football field. For an hours and a half and middle school was out there for two hours w students passing out left and right from heat stroke. My younger brother was in middle school when this happened and he told me about the students passing out. Mississippi in August is about one of the worst things to encounter, right next to July in Mississippi in summers anywhere in the south. Anyway someone was passing rumors that someone found a snake in one of the buildings. Another one said that there was an actual bomb in the school. Another was that someone started a fire. And one that kinda stuck w me was that the whole bomb threat was a ruse so that somebody could rob the bank in town while all the cops were busy searching for bombs in the school buildings. That last one turned out to be true. I think it was one girl went and called the school for the bomb threat and three guys went and robbed one of the many banks in my small hometown. It was all over the news later that evening and they caught the first two guys that afternoon and they didn't catch the last guy until that evening when he was trying to run for it and they found the money hidden in a backyard grill. But that was the very thing I was so pissed about was that they made us sit outside on metal bleachers in 100 deck point f feet. One of our gym teachers in high school was a bidophile. He was busted by the FBI for possession of child pornography. He was actually legally blind, rode a moped to school, so we all joked that he just couldn't tell they were children. Poor high school humor. He was the one who did the scoliosis test for all the athletes and the trainer for the teams, helped with stretching, etc. When questioned if he ever had a relationship with a student, he responded no, they are too old for me. I like them around 13. Still in prison I'm pretty sure point there was a rumor of an English teacher having a relationship with a student. Nothing ever happened until she graduated, he quit, and they lived together. The basketball coach's car was searched and they found beer and weed seeds in it. He was fired point we had a biology teacher that was high on cocaine. A student was suspicious, asked to go to the bathroom and reported her. She was fired point a math teacher was married to one of our VPs. Rumor had it that the VP, wife, was having an affair with our school cop, very attractive dude. Turns out it was true. Math teacher got fired for coming to school drunk. They found more beer in his car. The school cop became our dean of boys. The whole ordeal was so unbelievable because she was so unattractive and the school cop was so attractive. It was the talk of the school for a long time. 
when my mom was in school, this has been confirmed by multiple people and the girl, there was a girl who wanted to be homecoming queen so badly she blew the entire football team. She did not get crowned homecoming queen point also, a teacher confirmed this for me, back in the 80s there was a student who got caught prostituting herself on the roof of the high school. She'd ask to go to the bathroom then about 5 minutes later a guy would ask to go as well. Eventually she was busted point. When I was in school a girl got caught giving BJs to two guys at the same time in their senior English class while watching Romeo and Juliet. That is the reason why the teacher no longer turned the lights off during movie time point also. My fourth grade teacher was arrested and convicted when I was in high school for child molestation and kiddie born charges. He never tried anything with me, but was in his 30s and always very big into hugs and hand holding. Which is weird, when I thought about it later. Also, his wife was in on, but she got pregnant with their second child during the trial, so she wouldn't be believed to be involved. Her kids go to school with my brothers now. There is a state trooper who was married at the time, but had a reputation of flirting with any girl 15 and older. If he pulled you over, he'd ask for your number in exchange for not getting a ticket. He eventually started an affair with their 16 year old babysitter that lasted until she graduated and a few years later they got married. They were busted once having sex behind a shopping center. Literally everyone in the town knew about it but did nothing. She is a stay at home mom and doesn't seem to ever have a babysitter over there's a ton more but yeah, she'd get weird in a small town. I have two, my friends and I always got a weird vibe around our 9th grade science teacher. He was cocky and rude, his nickname for us was retarded elk, but he was always gently flirting with the pretty girls in my class. Luckily during this time, I was balls deep in my emo phase, and not very cute, so he left me alone point my boyfriend at the time, said that his aunt had a friend who went to our school a decade or so ago, and told us, that this teacher apparently won. Slept with girl students and two, can't be a coach anymore, because he slapped a kid. These rumors seemed kinda realistic, but I wasn't so sure until this past year a teacher at the high school, who I'm close with confirmed, that he had slept with at least one student. However, because it happened a few decades ago when schools weren't so strict about that kind of thing, nothing happened to him, even though the girl had to be probably 14 to 15. This weirded me out, because he also does a driver's ed thing on the side, and because of it, I was recently in a car with him for 2 hours. I definitely feel like he would have tried something with me, if my mom hadn't been in the backseat point the second one is, that two teachers at the junior high had an affair, while the woman was married to another teacher at the high school. This is actually 100%, irrefutably true, and the two junior high teachers are now married to each other. The teacher at the high school wrote a thinly veiled fictional book about his marriage to her, going so far as to describe her goat-like noises during sex. This is hilarious, because that lady was a beach fuck you, goat lady. An old ex-army tech studies teacher was found out to be a racist and something of a psycho. We thought it was all myth hearing about how he used to pick up insolent kids, throw them in the bin, yes, the classroom bin. He would pick a child up and deposit them in and scream at kids, line them up against the wall and yell in their face like a drill sergeant. It's the kind of stuff you think is myth as a kid, but it was all real. I was on the receiving end of the shouting and witnessed the bin thing multiple times. He got fired for making racist comments towards a black cowalker and making threats against them and another cowalker, having given them two real bullets presumably kept from his military days, on which he had inscribed their names. He was a woodwork slash metalwork teacher and made threats against their lives when he handed it to them like, watch your back or something to that effect. Dude was either playing a practical joke that overstepped the mark or was a literal psycho intent on murdering two of his colleagues. Then he died of a heart attack several months later, before he could be tried for the alleged death threats. Fun fact one of the cowalkers he threatened was then fired a few years later for not teaching their class the required material over the year then supplied them all with the answer sheet to the final exam that they worked out having gotten access to the paper early or some such dodgy dealing. To actually, first is pretty standard, teacher gets accused of sleeping with a girl, turns out to be true, only thing is she was pretty and he was ugly as fuck. 
so I don't get it point next one. We had a guy contract 3, yes 3 STDs which he confirmed in senior year, when he got into a fight, and cut himself, and bled into a guy's eyes he was holding down. He went to prison over it. The rumor had been going around 4 years prior to that, and if they are to be believed, he caught STD 1 in middle school, by having sex with a girl who had herpes. He caught STD 2 when he gave a girl herpes and she gave him syphilis some time between freshman and sophomore year. He contracted HIV while shooting up on steroids to get bigger. The kid he bled on got lucky and tested clean. He brought the papers to school to stop the spread of rumors about himself. He got three tests on it and showed everyone in school. So has lucky as fact point anyone who knew him could tell you he was faking jacked and had a rage problem point I remember when the teachers were having difficulty pulling him off the other kid who didn't even really do anything to him. He was screaming welcome to my world. HIV, herpes, and syphilis. On top of that the guy was confirming the rumors saying I don't care about having STDs I only care about faking. Well you aren't going to get laid with that mentality. That our male German teacher, in an all-male school, was a pervert slash bidophile so as the story goes, we had this weird German teacher come in, because a normal teacher was out on maternity leave the new teacher started acting weirdly, sending 13 year old kids messages like love your facebook profile pic xx he asked one guy, to stand on a table to turn a projector on, and asked him to twerk. He then played Britney Spears, work beach as the kid twerked, the next day he said, every time I hear that song I think of you twerking, every class he had his FASA book, Instagram, and Snapchat details on the board, so students could add him. This was all strange behavior which got all of us thinking this dude was a bit offile what got him fired was, one night he was walking down an alley, and ran into a group of 16 year old kids. He offered one kid 50 euros for a BJ, the male kid agreed, so the teacher dropped his pants, the kid punched him in the stomach, and stole his wallet, after having to explain to the police how he lost the wallet, the principal found out, and he was fired from his job, although he wasn't charged with anything we never saw him again tldr, male teacher in all male school, started sexually advancing on minors, and got fired for it, after advancing on a student who then stole his wallet and the principal found out. This one girl in our middle school, flashed the tech teacher during class, I was there, saw the whole thing, it was my first glimpse of boob as I roll. For which she got in trouble, but it came out during her trips to the principal's office that the tech teacher had already been grooming her, and they were intimately involved on some level. Tech teacher got fired, she developed a smug sense of superiority when she got back from her suspension. To be fair, she was the first girl of our grade to hit puberty, and boy did she have phenomenal genes, so by the time this had happened, she looked closer to 18 than 12. She was a fan of low-cut spaghetti strap tank tops with brightly colored bras poking out underneath, hidden beneath a North Face jacket that she would take off as often as she could get away with, and for that reason, me and my buddies were fans of hers at that point. Anyway, no one really thought much of that incident until, fast forward a few years, and we are all in high school, and it's rumored that the same girl, we were still underclassmen, is faking the film teacher, who is married with three kids. The whole school loves the film teacher, he was in charge of doing the morning announcements, and would often fill in for students in his class, when they couldn't make it to the recording session, so the whole school knew his name and face. He had a hilarious charm on camera, would never forget a student's name, and always said hello to everyone in the halls. He was an all around great guy, and his kids were adorable too. Anyway, the rumor turns out to be true, we find out, when the film teacher is arrested during class, and led out in cuffs. After the dust settles we find out, that the girl had gotten pregnant with film teacher's baby, and was trying to blackmail the film teacher into paying for her abortion, and he, being the only breadwinner of the family on a teacher's salary with three kids couldn't pay so easily, so she turned him in point it was at this point that our grade realized the common denominator for these two incidents. Honestly, the law is the law, I don't want to downplay the severity of what these men did, and the people who were supposed to pay for their crimes paid, but knowing this girl, and how crazy she could be, and how proud she was, when it was all over, I think she knew what she was doing. 
I thought mine would be too dark, but after reading some of these, there are quite a few. My HS was equal parts awesome and notorious. Because of its reputation, I won't go into too much detail. However, anyone who attended during the late 90s early zeros would probably immediately recognize the school point aside from the local investors of mobsters and other connected people, as well as some political investors. We had some inside drama point theater director setting up cameras in the boys bathrooms. Was a silly rumor, turned out to be true. And yes, he's now on the registry point my senior year, one of my classmates was kidnapped and wrapped by another fellow student. Okay so, the last week of school there were two students who were notably absent, and one of them, I actually had multiple classes with. Sadly, he was the guy I had a tiny crush on. After day 3, rumors started to float about where they went off to. To this day, I still don't know what exactly happened. I know the truth came out, and the faculty slash parents did a lot to keep it quiet. This was during the late 90s, and the only thing to conclude was that the student was held against her will by the guy. Some people suggested they ran off together, again I don't know. I saw him once after graduation, at one of the parties, but never got any solid info. The choir teachers, husband, and wife, had been embezzling money from the school. If this one was hinted at, no one was talking about it. They ended up being fired a year or two after I graduated point during my senior year, the band class, my year, went north for a competition and a couple of the students made forged twenties of the new twenty dollar bills. Again, this was the late nineties, and he had one of the most expensive printers at the time. I remember us joking that the new twenty looked like fake money to begin with. A few people got caught, but not until the class returned. The store where they use the bills tracked them down, after was an investigation as to why they had a till of fake twenties. I think those caught still managed to graduate, but I believe the student who printed the money got actual jail time point it's been nearly 20 years since I graduated, so I'm sure there's more, but this is all I can remember off the top of my head point here's an on dark rumor. Someone told us that the app geometry teacher could be put on pause if you were to bring up trains in class. Let's just say, a few lessons and tests were put on hold because of this. I went to an all-boys Catholic high school. Our head principal, when I got there was this guy named Father John, not his real name. He was super friendly to all the boys and parents. However, he was known to have a nasty streak with the teachers. He fired a teacher for giving a school donor's kid an F. We all knew he was corrupt, but nice to say the least point as the years went on, it became a common joke that Father John diddled little boys. We all assumed that he plucked them from the freshman class or the elementary school that was part of the parish. Anyway, we all knew he was creepy. It wasn't until he randomly disappeared halfway through my senior year that any questions were raised. We joked he had been arrested for pedophilia. While we still don't have proof. It turns out that he was sent to a Carmelite center in Illinois that was used by the Catholic Church, Carmelite Order, to cover up incidents of sexual assault point. After consulting with many of my fellow classmates, and after viewing Spotlight, along with numerous web searches we have come to the conclusion that Father John assaulted a boy and the Carmelite Order sent him to Illinois to get better. I'm late, but I'll share point there was a rumor that came out my senior year about 2-3 to three months before graduation that a group, 5-6, of football players ran train on a cheerleader. It was more scandalous because all of the guys had girlfriends, most were cheerleaders, too. The girl was an outcast from the cheerleaders, as you can imagine, and she kept to herself for the next few weeks after a month or two, everyone's fascination began to wane, and we never knew the full story, although most believed it to be true. Then, about two weeks before graduation, the student government hosted this stupid reverse beauty pageant to raise money for the school. It was basically a normal beauty pageant, but for guys only. They had the Q&A, speeches, dressing up in dresses, talent show, etc. And well, one of the contestants was a member of the infamous train, as it had been dubbed in our school. His talent routine was sports themed, and had music in the background. He juggled a soccer ball, caught a one-handed TD, dribbled a basketball, etc. His finale was to hit a three-pointer as the music was building to a big finish. 
he puts up the shot, it goes in, and instead of the boom or explosion we expected, a choo-choo comes blaring through the speakers. The audience exploded in laughter, and he was escorted off the stage by a teacher. I remember crying I was laughing so hard. It took about 5 minutes to calm everyone down again. The winner was supposed to be chosen, based on audience applause. As you can imagine, it wasn't even close, he won by a mile. They also had an award ceremony planned, but since he had been escorted out, the whole show just sort of crumbled into an awkward finish where a teacher came out and scolded us the pageant was on a Friday, and when we returned on Monday, we all got confirmation the rumor was true. Over the weekend, the girl crashed a party that she knew all of the guys and their ex slash girlfriends, some stayed together, others didn't after the rumor started and went to every girl and told them to their face that she faked their boyfriend. She then flipped everyone off and ran out the door. Our school was a sheet out for those remaining weeks. There was a male football coach science teacher who was married to a female science teacher in my high school. They had two kids. One day there were rumors and screenshots going around about the male teacher having an affair with a former female student that was one year ahead of me and graduated the year before. I thought it was BS and just kids trying to get someone in trouble because they didn't do well in the class or something until someone sent me the screenshots of them planning to meet up and he was telling her to not wear anything too slutchy. The male teacher just stopped showing up, and we cycled through a few subs for the rest of the semester then a permanent sub for the second semester. It was assumed he was encouraged to resign by the school. His wife still worked at the school, and was telling people, if you have questions about what happened you can talk to me no one believed she would tell the truth about her cheating husband point the screenshots also were of a facebook messenger conversation so there was also speculation that someone made a fake profile with the teacher's name and picture to frame him which could have been done easily. This is probably why we never heard of him getting charged with anything. The girl was 18 and graduated when the screenshots were going around, but it was assumed the relationship, if any started, while she was still in school. There were these two sisters that went to our school and were super religious. One time, their parents made the whole family walk out of Wreck-It Ralph for the satin joke. One of them even cried to her parents and confessed even just because she had a crush on a guy that she hadn't done anything with that didn't pursue her, nothing. We went to a school with a lot of former homeschoolers, so while this was kinda extreme, it wasn't totally out of the ordinary, so we didn't think too much of it. And then came the younger one getting in trouble constantly for holding hands, sitting next to certain guys, etc. They also would constantly bring up these youth meetings that they would go to all the time for their church. Fast forward a couple years later, and turns out, they're in a flat out cult. Through getting to know these girls better we found out that their parents are former Amish slash Mennonite and moved here to a tiny church that isn't too different aside from being allowed to have technology and other things. Arranged marriage has been confessed by the two girls, as the youth meetings are actually for the pastors to get together and choose who they think would be good together. Their church is made up of former Amish, former Mennonite, and Asian Indian people, all who think nothing of arranged marriage. One of the girls was recently on a ski trip with a much older man as per request. Just creepy. There was a rumor going around for the longest time that one of the app geometry teachers was a gay and sexting with male students in his class. Rumor had it that he would send and receive dick pics from other male students in exchange for better grades. Everyone had heard about this, but the teacher was never mysteriously absent, nor did he ever get fired, so we all just assumed it was a load of sheet. Well, one day I get a text message from a random number saying I have something important to tell you all. I opened the message, and I was in a group chat with about 7 other random numbers. The sender then sent in a bunch of screenshots of the geometry teacher sexting transcripts with dick pics and everything in plain view. I was shocked to say the least. I asked some friends of mine if they had received this message as well, and they told me they had, but from a different number. It had appeared that multiple students had formed a little network of phone numbers and were blasting out the screenshots to as many numbers as they could find. The whole school didn't receive the texts, but a good portion of each class did. 
a lot of the underclassmen didn't know who this teacher was, since he only taught juniors and seniors, but almost every single junior and senior got the text point you might be wondering, whatever happened to the offending teacher in question? Well, when the screenshots of the search thing were sent out, his name was the contact name at the top of the messages and he didn't directly mention any of his own classes in the messages. Because of this, the school had no direct evidence that the teacher was the offender, since any student with a grudge against him could have easily sent a dick pic from a born website and named himself after the teacher in an attempt to get him in trouble. Nobody knew who sent the first message and the school wasn't able to track the kid down. The teacher claimed it was a ploy to get him fired by a disgruntled student and the school actually believed it. This was a pretty small private school, so it's not like they could just get a replacement teacher super quickly. I graduated high school three years ago, and to my knowledge, he's still teaching there today. That our administration is more corrupt than a third world country's government point I have spent a lot if time talking about my issues at school and coming out about my abuse, but I have only briefly brushed over all of the other crazy sheet that has happened at my university point. When I was living near campus I was like the resident adult student. People kept coming to me with their problems and wild stories which I initially ignored because they were also crazy point almost every one of them turned out. To be real point I was told there was a rat trail near Greek Row, a set of houses near the dorms where fraternities and sororities are located. At night, people who walk through alone in this wooded dark trail towards the main campus run the risk of being jumped and wrapped. I thought it was crazy because it's a tiny private school full of mostly nerdy liberal arts kids. Nope, raps occur on a regular basis. So why does it continue? The students who do this and party the hardest have uber rich parents that are a part of the local societal elite and own eight sheet piles of money to keep the school going. These students hand off the privilege of being able to do this with immunity to the next generation of privileged students this leads into the next crazy thing that the administration is both laughably incompetent and horrifyingly corrupt. The school doesn't have a ton of employees and all of the administration wears a ton of hats. Well, when people started coming to me with all of these issues like being wrapped, I tried to turn them to the proper authorities on campus. I was told that, after feigning concern they would always essentially manipulate the victim into not pressing charges in some of the worst ways. You don't want to ruin his future because of one mistake do you? By not following up on this we are protecting you because this makes you look bad too. Maybe you should move to a different school, then. The perp would dump a ton of money into the school and do special study abroad at an Ivy League school somewhere for a semester and the whole thing will get swept under the rug point for the longest time I didn't believe any of this. Not only was it ludicrous, I had what seemed like a good relationship with security and administration for handling these issues. They seemed happy to let me catch the overflow of student issues until it happened to me. My ex sexually assaulted, stalked me, defamed me, and I have been threatened and stalked by whole groups of students over what happened. The administration went through every corrupt thing I was told about like ticking off check boxes of incompetence and corruption. My ex ended up donating enough money to have her name hung up on the wall in the cafeteria to avoid consequences. I was told to my face that my safety wasn't their concern. Because I was an older man and what lawyer could you afford to do anything about it? It has been nakedly clear that the administration has done everything they can to shield the students who have done this to me from any responsibility. I found out that the Title IX I filed was never investigated, nor where the perps even told it was filed in the first place. I found out that the administration spread some of the defamation thems lefts and gave students tacit approval to stalk me. I found out that the students of concern list is being abused to spy and stalk students using the security staff. I found out that a few years ago a black student was beaten nearly to death by a wealthy and connected white student and the university trumped up all of the charges against the victim and ignored pleas from on campus psych that the white kid was mentally unstable. The white kid went on to kill a cop during a schizophrenic episode point I found out that the school was sued by the cleaning staff for being forced to only speak English on campus and the university lost. I found out that a kid drowned at our pool and it was handled so poorly that a judicial injunction was put in place to prevent the university from managing a pool again, so they built the student center over it. 
I found out that administration has personally driven students to local hospitals when they are on hard drugs like heroin to keep the records clean. In fact, the timing for when I was coerced out of my private apartment lease by an administrator wasn't when the students claimed falsely that I was dangerous and was unable to convince police or security staff of this, but when I found hard drugs and homemade alcohol in the apartment and the administration was informed I was showing all of it to a local police officer. She came right in time to interrupt the search falsely claimed domain over the situation and presumably disposed of the illegal substances herself. The computers in the library that won't print cannot be labeled as such because it would look bad. There is a gag order on the school newspaper from talking about the school's financial situation. The school just received a 50 million dollar endowment, but the internet doesn't work over half of the campus most of the time. The roof has collapsed above our history and language building forcing teachers to hold office hours in the basement of the library. A lot of money runs through that school, but it doesn't even go towards bloated administration like most colleges. Where does that money go? It's such a mess. When I was a junior in high school, my girlfriend at the time's parents who were deeply born again religious, found out that she and I were having sex and sent her to live with her grandmother on the other side of the state in order to get her away from me. Point at least, that's the story she told me. Point she returned about three months later and her parents still hated me. Still forbade us from seeing each other. The relationship, what was left of it for two teenagers without cars forbidden to date, petered out not long after. Then the rumors started flying that the reason she went to live with granny was because she was pregnant. That the plan was to go away and have the kid and granny would raise it until the G slash F was ready to take responsibility. But if that was true, why'd she come back three months later? Rumor continued that granny went against the wishes of the ultra-religious parents and offered to help the teen mother to be get an abortion. All true. But I never actually learned the truth of it all, until about 8 or 9 years later, when I ran into her rumored at the time at a concert, and we decided to catch up on things there's still a small part of my heart that gets wrecked every time I think about it. Probably best that teenage me knew nothing about it, but it still hurts a little even 20 plus years later. I cold had a kid out there somewhere that I might know nothing about, or had my young adult life interrupted by premature parenthood. Lots to think about. Probably gonna get buried, but quite a horrible thing that happened about a year ago. So it was junior year and our bowling team had probably the best player in our school's history. The kid was nice, but kept to himself for the most part. I knew him, but wasn't the best of friends with him. We only worked together on a minor physics project. In middle school, my mom somehow knew his dad, so there's that as well. Anyway, he never really showed up to school last year and I can't vouch for him in sophomore and freshman as I didn't have any classes with him. I asked him why he doesn't come in and he said he's tired and everything and I mean, who isn't waking up at 6 every day. Someone told me he had Crohn's disease which was the rumor and nobody paid much attention to it until a year ago. I get a call from my friend at the rival school in the district asking me if I knew him. I was like yeah, but why are you asking me? Friend says or sheet man I'm sorry, but I heard he killed himself. I was like what the fuck you've gotta be kidding me. I called a bunch of people, and it was confirmed. School was bad the next few days after, because the tone was so somber and the teachers who had him were crying, and could barely get through the lesson. For anyone who sees this, and knows where this happened, and who this was, don't say anything personal out of respect for him and his family. I never knew him that well, but he was a great kid that didn't deserve to live with that ailment. In 8th grade the prettiest girl from our class simply disappeared overnight. All boys were in love with her, I was too, of course. She was that kind of pretty girl that you could tell will look good when she will be 60. Great personality, humble. We would hear from her strange things sometimes, like her mom who was a nurse of the school's dentist, would bring guys home over the weekend, and she had to take care of them. Her mom had her when she was 16, and she always had strange men in her life, to say the least. Absent father, unconfirmed rumors that her mom never knew who the father is, and could only narrow it down to couple of guys. 
One day, it was few weeks before school year's end, before summer holiday, they were gone. Like breakfast on the table with full cup of coffee, and untouché toasts on plate gone. All their things left at the apartment. Nobody knew anything. Nobody knew nothing for a couple of years, only rumors kept spreading that the mom had to flee because she owed a lot of money to Serbian mafia guy, I'm from Slovakia, and he threatened to kidnap them both and sell them to human trafficking gang. This rumor was not true. The other rumors was they are in Spain and that the girl did not even start attending high school and her mother is whoring her out somewhere in Laura Dimar, which was quite popular vacation destination even in our town in the late 90s, and people claimed they saw them there on vacation, which nobody believed. Well, after about 5 to 6 years, I think year, after I finished high school, I got a text message from my mom that this girl was looking for me, she rang a bell on my parents house said she is visiting for a week and would like to see her old classmates. I was working as an eye clerk in a hotel back then, but called in sick and took first train back home. Actually managed to meet her next day for about an hour. She was still very pretty, but looked 30 plus years old, not 19. Chain smoked, wore expensive stuff and drove a nice car, and basically confirmed the rumors that she was a prostitute. What was shocking, she said it was not her mother who hoed her out, but she did it willingly, she liked such, had such since she was 13, and liked the fancy lifestyle that came with it, if you hoe yourself oh the right guys. She and her mother fled the country, because actually a wife of the guy who was faking her reported to a police her husband is faking a 14 year old. Well, a nice girl. And I kinda knew. From all of that boy's attention she got back, when we were little 14 year old teenagers she liked me, maybe not the most, but I knew I was at least one of her favorites. And now it made sense, why not even the coolest schoolmate could get a date to a movie and a peck on the cheek from her, if she was already having full on adult sex with married guy at that age. And when we were saying goodbyes she causally invited me to hang out in her hotel room, and I did not take that opportunity. Not because I would not want to, or that I would be afraid of standard or anything. I was a 19 year old moron with constant erection. I had wet dreams about her for years to come, but because I was 19, insecure, poor with a sheety job, there was no discussion needed to know it would be an uneventful night for her and something to ruin my mood every time I would think about it. Now this will probably get buried since it is so late already, but I only got the proof some few hours ago, and this is a story that has to some degree disturbed me, and I'm posting, because I really need somebody to explain to me how somebody can do something like this now then. Here where I live the school system is different. At one type of school you have middle and high school combined 8 years in total, 4 of the one, 4 of the other. It is not unusual for students to quit after the first 4 and switch to a different type of school. One with a specialization. But some other students also do it, if they move somewhere different, and have another school closer by, or something like that. I did the first, the person in question did the latter. In fact, she moved to a whole different town point the rumor itself was, that she was extremely addicted to attention. I didn't really care, but I just now realize how far it went with her. Now this girl, let's call her A for the sake of simplicity. I got pregnant at 14 years I believe. This was in the last year I was at that school, about 5 and a half year ago, so I wasn't really anywhere nearby to witness the birth or anything. She got pregnant, gave birth, that much I could gather from social media. But that, social media, she quit for some time and just recently returned. And I noticed her posting pictures of a child here and there, I got to say I noticed afterwards, wasn't paying enough attention back then, that the child looked just a tad bit too old for a 3 year old, back when she started posting. I had a few younger siblings and cousins and I believed my instinct, before I got the confirmation. She got back in touch with me at around that time, because we used to be pretty chill with each other, but like I said, I didn't pay much attention, nor did I care about the child too much. I just asked some casual stuff like how he, the child, is doing, how she is doing, and the name, of the child. The usual. Now, I'm working on a diploma thesis and I'm getting in touch with people from other schools and cities as well. One guy from another town had a similar project as me, and I contacted him on social media, so we could try and help each other out a little. 
The project itself was very different, but we were kind of doing the same thing, the same type of optimization. The dude and I chat for a while, get to know each other. He asks me what I have been doing in my life. I give him a short rundown, like I was at 20th primary, yai middle. He recognizes yai, and asks me more about it. I tell him a few things here and there. He asks me, if I know a certain la. I'm like a last name? He says yes. I tell him like, she got pregnant, moved away, has a child, the stuff I knew. Next thing he says, is so she is still telling people she has a child. I got confused, ask him to explain what he meant. Now the sheet turned completely different. Dude tells me, him and A used to be together, because he thought he was the father. Basically, he was in my town for a while, visiting some relatives or something, and met her. They huked up, some time later she texts him she is pregnant. She moves to the town where he was, because her parents were divorced, and dad was living in the second town. They are together now, so he tells me, and everything goes to sheet, because she has a miscarriage. Now I don't know if she actively did something to cause it, but he claims she did. Now, pretty much 5 years later, on social media she has this little child with her in every picture point I was skeptical at first, because it was a hell of a story. I decide to tell her. Not because I wanted to ask her in all honesty, but more I wanted her to know like what kind of rumors are told about her. Warn her in a way. So I message her on social, get no response for a while. In that time I got curious. At first I thought she got pissed at me or something, but I turned really curious and begin to stalk her pictures a little. What I noticed was that the child looked older than it was supposed to, or so I think. On most of the pictures it was the same child, but every now and then there was a different one. You noticed when looking closer that its face was different. Not something you really notice with shitty camera quality. Eventually, today, she replies to me and tells me that it is true what the dude said. That she really had a miscarriage and pretended the whole time to have a child. I just need somebody to help me comprehend. My senior year of high school, one of the music teachers was in his mid-twenties and we were pretty sure he was dating one of our classmates. They started openly dating a couple months after graduation, and he left the school, because he definitely would have been fired anyway. It was weird, his mother was a teacher at the school as well, and they were from our small town. We all knew him growing up. Seemed weird to me, that he willingly made himself into kind of a pariah in his hometown all for a relationship, that had no shot at working out, and was based on a really faked up power imbalance to begin with. We also had a weird guy as our head of it. He is the head of an ultra-religious household, Flanders level stuff. His daughter was actually a classmate of mine, she was a nice person and all but their entire lives and personalities were defined by their faith, and objecting to anything and everything that didn't fit perfectly in line with it. Anyway, that was a bit of a tangent, but the rumor that turned out to be true was that the dad was a creepy old weirdo. He ended up being fired because it turned out he spent all his time at work watching lesbian born, pretty much filled his hard drive up with the stuff. Kinda of fitting, really, although goddamn how bad of an it guy do you have to be to realize that can't end well. This 16 year old rumor was just confirmed for me this past holiday. Remember when it was cool to pull that little plastic disc out of the lid of your soda bottle, stretch it out, and wear it on your wrist? I can't find anything about it on Google, so I don't know how ubiquitous this was. Anyway, the game was that, if you broke someone's bracelet off their wrist, they had to do something sexual with you. Generally, among a bunch of 13 and 14 year olds, nothing really happened. For us, it was more about the patience it took to slowly stretch the thing, so it didn't snap. Eventually, some of the local venues started selling little plastic bracelets that were very similar to the soda top variety, and rather than making their own, kids just started buying these from Hot Topic and other similar stores. They also started making them in different colors somewhere along the line. Parents started getting suspicious of the bracelets, and they were convinced that the different colors meant something devious, and eventually they settled on each color represents the different sex acts that you were up for. The most popular ones, the clear bands and the black bands, represented the most devious sex acts, up for anything and intercourse respectively. 
the problem was that most parents in our area were getting alarmed that we were wearing the clear colored stretch soda top bracelets and we had no idea for a while that they were confusing these for the clear up for anything variety and girls would innocently wear black hair ties on their wrists which the parents would misinterpret as their 13 year old daughter is advertising that she wants to have intercourse point eventually. The whole thing got picked up by the news. Opera added a story about rainbow parties which many parents confuse the bracelets with rainbow parties, which are a completely different thing. Look it up. And it was all getting blown out of proportion and kids were loving it and egging the whole thing on. The bracelets started getting banned at schools and the fad died out. Now for the juicy rumor part, when I was 14, early on in the bracelet craze, one of the older kids living in my neighborhood went out to a party wearing one of the black bracelets. My mom, the guy's mom and another neighbor cornered me one night and grilled me about the bracelets and what they meant and asked if Mike was going to one of those rainbow parties. They were oddly very intrigued. I basically shrugged them off and said yeah it's all just a rumor really to get you guys all psyched up over nothing, but yes theoretically you could yank one of those bad boys off someone's wrist and see what happens. And I thought I'd heard the last of it point fast forward a few months, I'm just finishing mowing our neighbor's lawn when she and her husband pull up with a car full of groceries. I grab a handful of bags to bring them inside to save them from doing two trips. As I set the bags down, out falls a bunch of those colored bracelets, including the clear and black ones. It was odd, but I sort of dismissed it at the time. Point fast forward about 8 years, I'm home from college and drinking with my family at another neighbor's house. The neighbor had just moved in a few weeks prior and casually mentions that he was a bit hesitant to move to the neighborhood because he heard a rumor that they were all swingers and thought everyone would be weird. My parents dismiss the rumor and everyone laughs about it. Point fast forward to this past holiday, I found out that there was actually a long standing rumor that my town had a vast swinger network and that my neighborhood was at the epicenter of it all. My parents and the local bartender confirmed all of this. I was too afraid to pry deeper. The neighbors with the bracelets had actually chosen this neighborhood because of the rumor and they had actually swung with at least one other couple that I know of only because the swinging got out of hand. The husband slept with a bunch of other women and the couple chose to move away and start over so I don't have solid proof. But I suspect that my hometown may have been at the center of the Setch Bracelet Rainbow Party craze, and that I may have single-handedly inspired one of the most epic Setch Bracelet Swinger orgies in my hometown 16 years ago. I have a couple ones that I can think of. One kid who was a freshman at my school decided to jerk off in the middle of class, and since we went to our old boys private school the classes were small, and we had to wear a formal uniform that made jerking off in class. Well, let's say he didn't achieve subtlety. After that his uniform never got in the way as that was his last day wearing it lol. Point second one that got police involved started with some football guys making a Dropbox account. The drop box was only known to a few guys and the purpose of it was when any of them got nudes they would upload it to the drop box and they'd all share a collection of girls nudes. It got to the point where it was getting around fast and and even guys who didn't have access to it would still send the nudes they got to the people who ran it just to add to the catalog. At its peak there was apparently over 10,000 nudes in this drop box. Somebody blew the whistle though, and then she'd really hit the fan when the parents of the girls found out. Last I saw of it was five guys getting escorted out of class by two rather angry policemen. I think the only thing that came of it though is the expulsion of the students. I think one of the parents tried to push a child pornography charge on the students, but I don't think anything came of it as everyone involved was under 18. Point HTH grade pre-algebra class. My teacher, older male, would have either all the girls at the front of the classroom or almost all separated from the boys. He gave off incredibly creepy vibes. My female friends all thought he was creepy too. Im also female. There were so many rumors, and still are till this day, about him being a creep slash bedo, and I believe all of them. It's hard to keep track. He apparently does have some bad stuff on his record from what I've heard. For example, looking down girls shirts, one time, I missed slash skipped over about 7 out of 30 to 40 problems on a homework assignment, and he said I needed detention. 
Later that week I went into the designated room for detention. The next day my pre-algebra teacher asked where I was, and I explained to him that I was in the detention room. He told me I wasn't supposed to go there. I was apparently supposed to be in his classroom. He didn't say that when he assigned my detention. He said to just come in after school the next day, and that I didn't need an ode slash pass or anything. I told my mom about the situation, and she said this doesn't sound okay. It doesn't sound right. So she called my school and told them what happened, and the vice principal told my math teacher not to give me detention point DLDR. Eighth grade creepy and somewhat old math teacher probably would have been unspeakable things to me if I followed his directions for detention, but my mom, in a way, saved me. Similar to one of the other comments, we also had a Cold War bunker in the USA, but it was for the entire surrounding neighborhood point there's a big metal trap door in the cafeteria that nobody really questioned which leads there, but the main entrance is through a giant steel door in the back of the janitor's office. The word of mouth was that a teacher can take anyone down there for education reasons, so one day our friend asked a teacher who was a buddy of his to bring us down there, and a small group of us got to go point we went back through the janitor's office, which was already pretty hidden around the back of the cafeteria, and through the teacher's lounge. The janitor at the desk sort of gave the teacher a look, but actually took us back. There was a metal staircase that brought us down into a huge boiler room, and from there they showed us the parts of the bunker. They showed us a giant cellar with rotting wooden shelves where they would have stored food, and a dark stone tunnel with no light and multiple little sectors that would have been the actual safe rooms. There was a lighter patch of wall in the shape of a square above the entrance where the sign used to be, but apparently somebody stole it years ago point I don't think anyone else has been down there since, and they are demolishing that building soon.